Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I'm so excited to be here today with Heather Egerton. Heather is an emotional health and intelligence expert on a mission to help the world feel better. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It's an absolute pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'd love to start for you to just kind of tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into the work that you do today. Yeah, sure. It happened. I was given an actual coach to work with, an executive coach to work with in my corporate career. I worked as, um, not not at the time, but in the end when I finished working in the corporate world, I, f- I finished as a projects director. Um, so when they gave me an executive coach, I was like 35, I think. <clears throat> and actually, cheekily, they sort of gave it me so that they could get me into a position where I'd manage people and, and manage teams really well. Um, however, like two sessions into my coaching, I said, like, I don't want to manage people. Um, it's actually not for me. It's like, it just takes me away from, you know, what I was I was working on and the, the kind of deals that I was writing at the time. So um, fast forward, like, three months into my experience of coaching, and I'd been really pushed to, like, well, what is it you want out of life, Heather? <clears throat> because... excuse me who is it that sits you down and asks you that question like and genuinely wants to know the answer so I was like when I did finally come with the answer it was like well actually I want to retire from having to work at 40 and I also want to become a company director before I leave um so lo and behold that actually happened and in the time that I was finishing, I was like, well, what do I want to do with my time when I'm free to like choose whatever I want to spend my time doing? Um, and it was like, well, why not do this? It's amazing. Like help other people, you know, go through that journey of, of kind of really following what it is they want truly in their life. So I retrained while I was still working, actually, um, and also cheekily because I'm very cheeky. <clears throat> kind of coached my boss into an exit plan so I finished a year early and um in the background I was also doing property I do property development and have a few um rental properties as well so I've amassed a bit of a portfolio so I already had that kind of lined up for me to do and there was a property ready for me to build and be a project manager for that so I already knew that I was going to have quite a lot of things to to keep me, um, should I say, occupied. I'm not the type of person that sits still easily, Sarah. You probably know that. <laughs> I'm the same way. Were you worried that retiring that early that you would maybe get bored and run out of things to do? Or did you know that you would fill it? I always just knew there was something greater. And there was just something more impactful for me to really kind of focus my energy and and get involved with um and I can't say at the time that I knew exactly what that was going to be or what that looked like I just inside like I just knew there was just more um and I just followed that I guess you just what you stepped out in faith and you know the universe was that. yeah do you feel like the coach that you had was the cat catalyst for you being able to become the company director and retire by 40? I think that the coach I had was a catalyst for me to step into more of my feminine energy and real, really, really understand the power of who I was and what it is I came here to do. I think the fact that I asked for the the retirement to come early and, and to become a director naturally evolved that way and and my evolutions kind of got me there anyway um so I think it all contributed um I think having someone to walk by me like in tandem and in support of um I think gave me the courage and the confidence to really go out there and and really ask for and and get involved in exactly what it was that I wanted and I can't necessarily say that I've always had that even though I was brought up by my father and he was very, look, anything's possible. Um, You know, you might be talented in this and your brother's talented in that, but, you know, anything you want is possible. It wasn't necessarily the type of person that was like, you have to get an education. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so he was very good, very good. Um, but I think the catalyst with this person partic- particularly was the first kind of female that I had in my life that showed me that there was more to more to my makeup um and human being as such more power to me um and especially from a feminine perspective because I did work in quite a male dominated environment um so there was definitely that that allowed me to really experience someone modeling back to me what was really possible um in that journey I think yeah and just getting clear on even what it was that you did want I feel like that's such a it's simple but that's huge Massive. In fact, I love that opposite question as well, Sarah. And I love that you you use opposites, mainly based on like whoever does know what exactly it is they want, um, and everyone always knows what they don't want. Right? So yeah. it's kind of a process of elimination, isn't it? That's very nice. Yeah, it's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. The contrast. <laughs> yeah, totally. You teach that we really can't have it all without trading in any parts of ourselves. Could you tell us more about that philosophy? Yeah, I traded in my heart (laughs) for money. (laughs) I think a lot of us can relate to that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I traded in, I mean, I was single for 17 years Mm -hmm. and threw my life and my soul, my everything into work. Um, That was my life. Yeah. That was really, really what I was, even on Sundays, you know, it was, I was, I had my phone glued to me, I was on email, yeah. um, I was available for people, my clients 24 seven. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a very high powered, stressful. Um, I was cutting multi-million pound deals with the likes of IBM, um, Vodafone. It was a very high, intense kind of corporate role. Um, and things could go wrong at the drop of a hat and I'd lost myself I completely lost myself um and that's why I talk about you know you can have it all without trading in parts of yourself because well I walk that talk in the sense that I'm now in a really committed loving relationship my whole life everything else comes first and then and then and then there's business and there's success that happens anyway naturally rather than it me being the one that pushes that yeah. and wishing that I could have all the other things. <laughs> yeah. I love that so much. I feel like it's scary though. Like we are kind of conditioned to just put our life on hold and focus on work. And then it's like those things can come later. But like you said, 17 years went by. That's a lot of time to wait for like, you to start living, like prioritizing yourself and your health and your relationships and all. I mean, I don't know. It's just wild. Yes. When you play it back to me, that's a long time. It is a long time. Like I didn't know who I was, Sarah. Yeah. Like my identity was my work, my position, you know, how much money I had in the bank, what car I drove, Mm -hmm. um, the size of my house, how many houses I had. Yeah. And so was it not until you left that corporate environment that you were able to focus on the rest of your life? I, um, I'll be honest, when you move into more of an entrepreneurial kind of dynamic um, and choose that as a career, it doesn't necessarily mean that the normal pattern that you follow um, from a money validates me money makes me feel good kind of thing necessarily goes away it kind of I call it the numbers games come back um and they kind of they look different but they've still got the same characters and they've still got the same kind of um traps should should, I should say in in my previous career, like you're only as good as your last month, you know. Yeah. And actually, in the entrepreneurial journey, um, even in property, like if I go there first, like you're only as good as the property you've just developed, you know, and the market. 
you know, there's no circumstantial, there's definitely no circumstantial safety within moving into the entrepreneurial journey, as was most of my life's never had circumstantial safety anyway. It was as good as your last month, right? So when you go into the coaching industry, then it's the same. You're only as good as your last client. You're only as good as like your last sale. You know, it's that can become the same, the same, no matter what industry you're working. Um, so it has been quite a big, big journey for me to create my own personal safety within myself and really detach my own value from circumstances and, and know that it doesn't matter what's going on around me, what the numbers look like, that doesn't, that's not a personal value thing that I should be taking on you know it's I am valuable and whatever else comes after that is added value. <laughs> um and it, and I don't need it to make me feel amazing and wake up like I do now feeling a million dollars every day like that's that's my measure of success it used to be how much I sang in the shower in the morning um where I reframed my measure of success instead of looking at my bank account, you know. Um, and I've just kind of moved it from that to when I wake up every day feeling a million dollars, what else could anyone ask for? That's so powerful. There's people who go their whole career and their whole life and never figure that out, you know? Yeah, and I get it. Um, I totally get it. It's really scary. Um, there's a lot of messy middles <laughs> there's a lot of like what I call the space in between kind of <clears throat> when you move from a created life to a creator life yeah. that space of creating in the middle there's nothing that holds you but you've got to go do you know what I mean I read this book once that was talking about how you have to go through zero like if you're like negative five on the number line to get to a positive five you're going to have to travel up the scale and then you have to go through zero and that's like the void right and that's the scariest yeah. time but it's like it's like you leave a bad relationship before you have before you find a good relationship or when you like there's always this time between when we stop being who we were before becoming who we're becoming and it is so scary yeah really scary really scary and and to be honest like if it wasn't for the fact that I'm in personal development industry, like if it was that I was in a different type of industry, I honestly don't think I would have lasted the eight years that I have. Um, we have the skills, right, to support ourselves, I guess, mm -hmm. and, you know, help ourselves on the journey um, and meet incredible peers as well that we get to like spend a lot of time with and amazing mentors that we choose to step in and with and walk with. I know we're both in the Melanie Ann Mayer's world. And you go, you know, as long as there's someone a couple of steps up the mountain that's shining a light, you know, you go, okay. Mm -hmm. um, when you lose sight of that, then you're like, whoa, hold on a minute. Like, what's going down here? Yes. What am I doing? Like, what does this all mean? Like, who I am? Who am I? It's so helpful before finding <clears throat> Melanie and that whole world, because it really is a world. It's like this huge network of women. I didn't realize that it was possible to have a successful career and, you know, a good relationship, like an amazing relationship and to be beautiful and like literally to have like so many women in that world are just crushing it at life. And before it always seemed to me like you were crushing it in one area and everything else was falling apart, but yeah. it just the being able to see these examples in other women is so helpful. Mm. Yeah. And I talk about this story quite a lot. Um, when we have this, well, I say it's, it's the need for another's love or it's the need for money that always takes us off our own true path yeah, and stops us from seeing others, genuine lights out there that are really going the course too. Mm -hmm. I, I say when you have, 
when the desire within you um, does not feature those two things, um, the, the, the need for those two things, another's love and money, then you really, you really get to go, like, like really go your own way. And, and ironically, that's when the money and the love come. <laughs> and that's the, but that's the why, right, Sarah? Like, we totally see that. Like, it's yes. just beautiful how we are so connected around that. It, it is more about, well, it is definitely the safety, you, you know, like if you've got another's love, then you feel really held, right, and safe. Or if you've got lots of money in the bank, then that can make you feel held and really safe. And it's like, what do you do when you have neither? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who are you then? you know and and I can say from my own experience like and and it doesn't mean that you have to get to none of that for you to experience this but my own experience is about three or four times I've got to having no money and not feeling another's love in any way and finding the depth of my inner peace my inner love like finding really my power yeah. um and I've I've started to learn to walk with not having to be <laughs> with neither and still grow. Yeah. So yeah. I started to learn to walk without the stable blocks in place, you know, mm -hmm. and still have them coming in. It's a very, very fine, it's almost, I call it like a rolling of coin. Like I'm I'm the, the rim of the coin and there's love from another and money on the other side. And it's like, Sometimes we flip from one to the other. We go, oh, I feel great today because of this, or I feel great today. And it's like, well, if you can roll the coin. You can have both. You yeah. can have, absolutely have both. And a lot of both. A lot of both, yeah. A lot of yeah. both. And it's like when you've been through the journey of having neither, you learn what you have within you. And you learn that, that you know, who you are within you and what you have there is what you'll always have that. That can't go anywhere. Like we, we've got ourselves, you know, I don't know what happens after we die, but definitely up until that point, we've got us, <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're totally fully supported and we're always okay. Like always. Um, and I think from a more of a, maybe even not a practical level, but from a human being's point of view, um, who, who teaches us this? Sarah, who, who who is the one that shows us or models this or um, gives us the ideas that we can be the creator of our own life and feel this supported and this safe within ourselves mm -hmm. yeah. without people like us talking. This is why I'm like, let's, yeah, any podcast, like let's share this message. Let's get this information out to the masses because I know I wasn't taught anything like this at school. I mean, I did not do very well at school. <laughs> now, if there was an emotional intelligence class at school, I'd have aced it, you know, let's say, right? We would have been top of the class. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. This how how do you that. connect to your intuition? We'd be like, tick, tick. We'd be like <laughs> writing a whole essay on how to connect to your inner guidance system. We'd be on it, you know? And like, there's nothing like that at school, like maths. No, yeah. I know. I am, I'm grateful that this is becoming a little bit more of a mainstream conversation. I think with every single person that finds this, they are spreading the word. And I think it's going to create a better world for everybody in a better society. But you're right. We do have a lot of work to do. We have a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And it speaks to the mission I'm on about helping the world feel better. Yeah. Um, so many. And that's, in two ways like so many people I meet I in fact I'll, an example I had a group experience the other week and literally I just asked people to speak into the room how they were feeling today the first the start of the session to to really give them a landmark to like where they got to at the end of the session and it took 15 minutes for a lady to say I'm feeling really scared at the moment mm -hmm. and ironically as we were talking earlier because they were moving from what they've known all their life into something new. Yeah. Well, that's, like, well, that's great. That's okay. 
Yeah. When someone's like, how, how are you? They're not really asking, like, yeah. how do you feel? Tell me everything. They're like, you just say like, I'm great. I've been so busy. That's what, you know, everyone says the same thing. Nobody really tells you how they're feeling. Don't, and, and, and I also understand why yeah. once you would, and also I find it frustrating that, that we can't just own those out loud all the time. Because once you name it, like everything's better. <laughs> and that's why I say, like, I want to help the world feel better because the root to that is the more people that more people feel, then the less we're going to have crime, the less we're going to have mental health issues, the less we're going to, like, it literally speaks to every single problem crazy problem that with pain that we've got going on in the world right now yeah a hundred percent it's yeah you've got such a big mission and I love that I feel like you're really doing the work and you're you are also an embodiment of your work which is so powerful Hmm, thank you yeah thank you (laughs) um can we talk about how you have been teaching women about menopause and how it's either a beautiful awakening or a dark night of the soul experience? Can I know you just did a master class on this. Can you tell us more? I absolutely can. Yeah, it was. I generally do sessions or master classes or, or open conversations, basically, around topics that have really kept showing up for me in my life. Like, so it's whatever's going on with me right now are like can we have a conversation about this um really because if I feel like something's brewing for me or something's not quite right like I treat it as a signpost and I go let me just go and look at what's going on here and what started for me was I had a painful right hip Mm -hmm. out of nowhere it just showed up and I also I'm aware that it's it's very masculine side of the body the right side of the body So, and I know that I am a retiring doer. (laughs) Um, Still working on it, as we do. And and so anyway, I went down this rabbit hole with the hip, um, realised that the exercise regime that I've always had in place for 25 years or so um, wasn't really serving my body type now. And and then I read all about hormones and and then I was like, oh, started reading things about perimenopause menopause Mm. so I went down these rabbit holes and started researching and then I started getting these crazy makes no sense downloads from the powers that be giving me instructions to do certain things and one of them was cancel your gym membership um and that showed up I was in the shower and I was like what I've like I've been to the gym for 25 years why would I cancel my gym membership And so I did what I was told um, because I always follow what makes no sense. And then the evidence showed up a few weeks later when I did a body type quiz. And it, and also when I thought about where I felt the most fittest um, and actually the slimmest as well, not, <clears throat> not the weight was at the top of the list, but it was actually through lockdown when I was doing half an hour sessions um, online at mm-hmm. home, hit so I kind of, sessions mm-hmm. um whereas at the gym I was doing like hour-long workouts mm-hmm. um it actually said I was better for my body type to do 20 to 30 minutes exercise three times a week yeah um and the hour-long classes three or four times a week were counterintuitive they were actually making me store fat rather than lose it and obviously not working very well with my body type as well yeah so that's what started it. And when I had a conversation with a beautiful group of ladies yesterday, I shared with them like four key elements that I believe are the root cause of some of the symptoms that show up within menopause. Um, I'm happy to share with people offline or here if you want me to give you a quick rendition. I don't know how long we're together today. but I'd love for you to tell us. I think that's so valuable and can I just say I swear cardio makes me store fat like if I cardio I get 
more, I lose muscle and I gain fat every, and I always try, I'm like, no, you need to do cardio, but every time I focus too much on it, I get the worst results. Hmm. And what body shape are you? Are you? Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know the answer to that question. Like pretty like straight up and down <laughs> for years. I really, I looked like a 12 year old boy, but I filled out a little bit as I've gotten older, which I actually enjoy. Yeah. 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 When I was doing the wealth of women program last year, it's one of my, um, kind of more feminine focused, um, pieces of work. Mm-hmm. I, I really talked about <clears throat> the areas of your body where you store fat. It's all for protection. Mm-hmm. oh for me it's definitely in my stomach that's the yes first. okay so and some of the conversations I had in those sessions um were about healing parts of ourselves that mm-hmm. where we've had trauma and it could be physical trauma it could be emotional trauma um mm-hmm. and actually one of the ladies shared in there <clears throat> about the fact that they had a really traumatic childbirth mm-hmm. And I opened up about it, which is what what the space was about when when we did that particular session. And they, it was almost like once you've released the experience, because they've never shared with anyone how it made them feel and what went on with them, right? So once they released that specific experience mm-hmm. and shared it out loud, it was almost like there was a shift in their body. It was almost like their stomach had permission to stop protecting and storing fat. That's amazing. And so what sometimes I do say, like there are there are certain <clears throat> traumas that do result in a tummy tuck. Yeah. Like a trauma tummy tuck because I know that's one of the areas that I've always stored weight um in my in my abdomen Mm -hmm. and when I followed a rabbit not a rabbit hole but when I journaled about kind of what's that about um I haven't had children and I was carrying around this anger I suppose about the fact that I hadn't experienced that my body hadn't you know hadn't gone through that experience Which led me to openly accept that being childless is a gift. Yeah. So it was kind of, and the same for this other lady in the program with that experience. Mm-hmm. So when I talk to people about the four kind of elements around the menopause, it was very much linked to some of the work I did with that program. Mm-hmm. And things like, I've got people to own. We'll we'll get people in the audience who's listening in to own, like who here overthinks, overdoes, undershares their true feelings, right? And also, um, and I've still got it written down to make sure I say it correctly, under pleasures themselves. Yeah. So many women. (laughs) So there's like tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And I was ticking them as well, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. So let me tell you, the reason brain fog shows up for people heavily through the menopause is because they've used this part. They've overthought. They've used their head instead of their heart. They've let their head rule most of their life, the logic, the problem solving, the structure, the plan, the let me make sure I plan all of these things so nothing goes wrong, the perfecting, that sort of thing is all driven from this part of our body and Mm -hmm. I have to be honest and say during the menopause you're not allowed to overthink anymore also all really masculine like thinking like all of those are really masculine qualities like doing and thinking and yes um not maybe sharing so much of your emotions yes yes And, and that's the whole premise even this conversation yesterday, I was like, I cannot reiterate enough that the menopause is a beautiful awakening when you honor your body and the power of that. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
versus all the other things, right? So, you know, low libido. Well, if you've been under pleasuring yourself for a very long time, even letting somebody else have pleasure with you, but you not actually having pleasure while you're there, right? Yeah. Um, without being too descriptive. Mm -hmm. then it's like well why would your libido flame still be firing on all cylinders yeah. especially when you're going through this change you know we're just about to end the the whole death and recreation cycle that us women have the power to to experience on a monthly basis it's like you're just about to say goodbye to that and you definitely won't feel in the mood for certain activities and actually, that is one of the key aspects to experience a beautiful awakening, which is still following the pleasure. Yeah. Not just with a partner, but I mean, just pleasuring your own body while honoring your own body. Yeah. And the, it's like, I've heard women who do think of menopause in a more empowered way say like, it's a time where you can be completely for yourself where like a lot of women did spend their entire life, like you in a corporate career, or if you were raising children. And then, you know, when we get past this, we get past this time of like really giving a lot to others and we get to like give to ourselves. Yeah. That's exactly what honoring your body is all about mm -hmm. because it's not, um, if, if anyone's ever read the myth of normal, um, by Gabor Mates and Daniel Mates. The first two chapters are basically the kind of work that I do, which mm -hmm. is so many parts of us we disconnect from, yeah. um, and especially we disconnect our head from our body. Yeah. So that we can just crack on, um, yeah, so we can get things done. That's another thing around the menopause, all those things that you've brushed under the carpet and stuck in a backpack that you'll deal with later, they come back and confront you, right? Yeah. So it is a beautiful coming together, a reconnecting, a reclaiming when we surrender to it and stop denying ourselves that freedom, that right of past, you know, that right of passage, sorry, to move into our wise, elderly womanhood kind of, power you know like it is completely that yeah it's, and, and I can only go on the stories that I had shared yesterday it really there is so much resistance to go there and there's also so much resistance to change and it's like just got to accept that this is going to happen and like you either embrace it step back menopause right take the pause and reevaluate is this really serving me? You get, I know you mentioned about some of the, the clients I've worked with have left their corporate career and moved into something more purposeful. The frustration and anger that you might have felt in your job for things not moving forward or things getting done or feeling like things are in the way. Uh, that's, that's just all the signposts saying, hello, there's something else that you could be doing. If it's a signpost. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. But yeah, it's there's those are the two. There's the there's also <laughs> hot flushes. I've called hot flushes the shelves of shame. So like I don't know who here may well have experienced that time where they've been in a situation and they felt really shamed and they felt their whole body go on fire internally mm -hmm. maybe shown externally with the face goes red right but, but you didn't, <laughs> uh, yeah but you didn't necessarily get the hot flushes as such but you definitely internalized some kind of shame mm -hmm. that's just the shelves of shame showing up with the hot flushes that's what I've called it it's very controversial it's actually the second time I've said it out loud and now it's public, obviously, because this is live, recorded, but that's what I feel like they're, they're the root cause of mm -hmm. um, every time that you felt shame and internalised it and not spoken out or... Yeah. 
And there are women like my aunt, who I was telling you about who don't have symptoms. So what is that? Like, we can't just say like, no, this happens to everyone because like your hormones change, but it doesn't happen to everyone. No. <laughs> so we do, I think it's so powerful to look at this and to talk about it, have a conversation where we get to reframe it and we get to choose, we get to deal with this, especially if like, for me, I'm 40. So I have years ahead of me where like it, this is valuable for me because I can start to rectify some of this stuff now so that oh, yeah. when I get there, I'm not like kind of living with the consequences of ignoring my body for my entire life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's ultimately when a woman has walked with their full body, heart, mind, connection, all in tune, fully connected, um, and honored that connection, um, then they may well just have this ease and grace throughout the whole experience and not feel much of a shift. Um, I think it's, it's definitely, I want to use the right language here because I'm not a menopause expert. I'm not a hormone expert. I'm not a dietary or physical um, fitness kind of person expert. What I am an expert in, though, is when someone's feeling a certain emotion, then there's, there's going to be like something behind that, right? They're, they're all like an invitation to come and look, come and look. And what I've experienced with either clients that I've worked with or, or even in this session that I had yesterday and in my own experience is it feels like you're losing yourself a little bit inside, right? It feels like there's like this, like I did in the corporate world, right? It feels like there's a closing in of yourself, like a, a loss somewhere, like a disappearing of you, right? And the extreme of that can be rage. Yeah. And the opposite side of that from a, a the grace and ease perspective, and it's like, well, where do you sit on that scale? Like what's going on for you now? So for example, with you, Sarah, because I know we talked about it before I came on, you know, it's quite easy for us just to wait till it happens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not really look at it. Um, however, when we start to look at, well, what's making me feel angry now? Yeah. Like, and it could be your menstrual cycle because that's another experience that I went through last year where I healed myself from um, having really painful menstrual cycles. And that was all about honoring my body and that cycle in the month for me and really owning that. So it's like, well, if you, if, now, because I followed the anger, anger trail there and the mood swings there, it's allowed me to really identify with, well, what was that really about? And once I understand what that really was about, then it's something I'm not going to take into the second part of my life. Yep. Yeah. And it's the same for anyone that's early, I guess, early in the journey or, or around similar age to you, Sarah. Um I'm just the type of person that I'm not willing to accept that it's meant to be hard. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying it. <clears throat> I'm saying this out loud now because I recognize that it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like this way of living, like this way of looking at, well, if I felt that way in that situation, what's that about? I realize it's not for everyone. It's just that I truly believe that we can live fully in ease and grace. Um, and not struggle and not self-sabotage um, or and hurt other people in the process like I fully believe that and I'm just not willing to accept that after all the stories I've had of other women around me while I was just about to start this journey with perimenopause that it's going to be hard uh, um yeah yeah <laughs> I learned about cycle. I started cycle syncing. I don't know if you're familiar with that in 2000. Yeah. And I went from hating my period and having horrible PMS to, I love my bleed. It's like my favorite time of the whole month, but it's learned to honor it. I learned to take a few days off a few days to rest and then to see the gifts in it, which are, it's a very intuitive time. It's a time when your left and your right brain are the most connected. And 
um, it's a time for self-reflection. It's a time to like connect to the cosmic mother or your own inner mother or whatever you believe in. So I re because I was able to reframe it. I love it. I love every single part of my cycle, but like, I look forward all month to those three days where I can just take care of myself. So I wonder if it's a similar thing with menopause, where if we can reframe it and we can see power in it, it's going to be amazing. hundred percent. I mean, that's like you've nailed it in the sense that, as I say, you know, the the, the more we honour the the things that are going on with our body, yeah. the more we honour the natural process going on inside our bodies on a monthly basis, the, the more we can move into the menopause, honouring that phase in our life as well. And I'm with you, yeah, I really look forward to the self-inquiries that I have when I when I get to that stage of the month like so yeah totally with you I'm not sure have you read the there's a great couple of books I'll recommend as well um there's one called Wild Power that was the first one I read that's still my (laughs) I honestly wish someone had handed me that when I left school yeah like I really do wish someone had handed me that book and now they've got one out that they brought out in September called Wise Power (gasps) which is about the menopause Oh, I'm going to have to get that. Mm-hmm. I love that book so much. I've read a lot of other books since then on cycle syncing. Cause I'm like, once I find something that I'm into, I get really into it. But yeah. Wild Power was the first one I read and the way that they explain it from like, it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's so I'm excited to read that. That's yeah. And I will say, look, I'm in the early stages of this menopause experience, like inquiry itself. And and I'm sure I'll get to the other side where I'll be like, yeah, this is exactly what will happen for it to become really easy and graceful, easy, easy and graceful. But um, but I'm still in the middle of, of really understanding and unpicking kind of where things sit and just doing the work. I love it. I think it's like you said, I wish that I'd known like from the very beginning that I thought my cycle could be something so empowering. Yeah. But now it's so cool because we do get to know before we get into menopause, why that can be powerful. And so it's going to be a totally different journey than spending years, like with debilitating cramps and PMS and like chugging, like ibuprofen. It, we're not going to have to have that same experience again. Yeah. Yeah. It's just exciting. <laughs> thank you for the women that have gone before us like and done the same Mm self-inquiry and found a different way thank goodness yeah um this is such a good conversation I'm so excited for everyone to hear this um so I want to be like mindful of your time but could I ask you just a couple more questions sure it's like 10 past 10 at night here are you tired (laughs) No, I normally go to bed about 11. You're all right. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll just ask you a couple more. Um, you say in a post to the depth in which you feel is to the depth in which you can live, which I love so much. Can you just expand on this a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just thinking of like an example You could be, I'm very in nature quite a lot with my dog. I've got a rescue dog, Tessie. And before when I used to walk her, it used to be a chore, like to just, it had to happen. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't anything other than let's just get the dog walked. Yeah. And oh my God, it's even like the menstrual cycle that we were just talking about. It was like, let's just have the period and get it over with and crack on with the rest of my life. You know, oh, here it comes again. Kind of dread sort of thing, especially with the dog. If it was rainy and I'm like, oh, I've got to walk the dog. And so what part of that experience did I actually feel? Like there wasn't any connection to being outdoors there wasn't any connection really to the dog while I was outdoors it was a chore it was just happening the same with the menstrual cycle there wasn't really a connection to this beautiful natural process that we have the power to experience it was a 
it needs to happen so I can get on with my life yeah. um and wear nice knickers again you know yeah <laughs> there wasn't any sense height and there wasn't any connection to any part of my body in those experiences mm-hmm. and just today I took the dog to what I would call like a field that's ready for harvesting over here in in the UK and it's so windy we've had a I think it was storm warning or tornado warning and literally this grass was like this swaying you can just imagine really big really past my head really tall I had it either side of me and I was walking down this path and you know what I felt like I was in heaven on earth yeah that's what it felt like because I was there like present like there in the moment I mean it's the same with obviously the menstrual cycle when you're in your bleed phase it's like the more present you are with yourself or the downloads the spirit speaking to you like the things that come through to you and next level like what yeah (laughs) none of it makes sense and it's all amazing and yeah so it's kind of that's what it's about to the depth in which you feel that's what it's about for me anyway um how much you experience life is are you really there Mm -hmm. present to it and that goes back to what you were saying of like the four of the four things that you're talking about with menopause the being able to share your feelings, you have to know what you feel. Like some people, some women, and I'm, I have been guilty of this as well. Like you could never share your feelings if you didn't even know what you were feeling. You know, it's not even about not wanting to share them. It's like, you don't even know. And then the connection to, to our pleasure, you have to be able to feel to experience Mm. that. Mm. Yeah. I think it's, I think sometimes if we haven't f- experienced so much where we felt everything throughout, uh, the rainbow of emotions that are available to us that actually everyone feels every day, um, maybe for varying amounts of time, and being, a, being in a position where we are being invited to really talk about well, what was that feeling all about? Like, how come she felt joy, joyful there and um, painful there? You know, without without having the, the the depths and the knowledge of that, then things like even manifesting the life of your dreams, for example, not to use a very coined phrase, but it's really challenging because if you can't bring yourself to the feelings of what it is that you want to call into your life, how's it going to find you and feel safe to be with you or come to you? Um, if there's like this unneutralizing kind of experience with your feelings. So powerful. Wow, this has been incredible. And I could talk to you all night, but um, I will let you get to bed. But could you just tell us how we can find you on the internet and plug into your work? Do you have any free offers or Facebook group or what's the best way to connect with you? The best way is to connect with me on Facebook, Heather Regginson. I'm also on LinkedIn, Heather Regginson. <laughs> like to keep things simple. We know that, Sarah. Um, and I've also got a YouTube channel, which has got quite a lot of interviews that I've had in the past called the Vulnerability Arena and various experiences that I've um, shared um, from a masterclass perspective. Um, I don't have any free offers at the moment. I'm thinking like, mm, I have got this. <laughs> it's more of a scarcity and lacking mindset into the realms of abundance. It's like a six week experience that I've got that's open as a group, um, which I do normally charge 222 for. If someone really... That's a great deal. It's so good, isn't it? If someone's like really like, wow, like I wanna wanna really kind of step into what I would call uh, above the invisible line and, and really start calling in all the things they want, then that's that's out there and I'm happy to gift it to your to your listeners if they 
if they feel called to tune into some of my work I'm happy to do that because you're amazing Sarah so are you thank you so much this <laughs> is wonderful and uh, like oh I'm I'm going to be feeling the vibes from this the rest of the day. So I love being in your energy. I've loved this conversation and I'm so grateful for your time and your wisdom. It's been an absolute pleasure. Talk soon. Thank you. <laughs>